Guns back inside. Both the breaches in sector 12. Get it. Get those hatches closed. Where are we on that hull breach in sector 17? ETA 60 seconds. Engineering is Starboard guns, we're down. Captain. Hard to do my best work like this. Can't we fight back? Carrier, just release more banshees. Uh, are we fighting back? We are, Professor. Let me handle that. You just give me the update on the arc. Starboard guns are down. Factory module 3 has internal fires. Poke the nest, didn't we? We did. Evacuate and vent. How long can we keep this up? Not long. We're losing too many guns. At this rate, it'll be over soon. I think I found a way to get help. You can reopen our portal? No. We're going to make a halo. What? I've discovered the Ark keeps an almost finished ring in its central forges at all times. It's an emergency replacement in case one of the other rings breaks down. Rings? You must mean galaxy-destroying super weapons, right? Well, on that front, I figured out how to disable the ring's firing mechanism. We can only launch it to one of the locations of the original rings, however. Isabel, you said the Master Chief first found a ring near enough to reach. That would make it within range of a comms beacon. It could work. Anders, how long do you need? Twelve hours, if my calculations are correct. We don't have twelve hours, Professor. We might not have twelve minutes. We just can't beat that right now. I can. I'm gonna need a little help, though. Explain. Well, for starters, I need her down there with me. Isabel? Sorry, sir. I've been on the Ark a while. After recent battle reports, you should have figured out that there are rules around here. I intend to break one. A big one. We'll need to split ground forces between these two locations to buy me some time. You're taking control of ground forces now? Buy you time for what? That ship brought these monsters. Killed everyone I was supposed to protect. Now it wants to do the same to you. I won't let that happen. It's time to show them what power really means around here. Captain, we're on site of the Forerunner particle cannon we discovered at the cartographer. We've targeted the. Hit, Professor. The enduring conviction is immobilized and not going anywhere. What's the ETA on full penetration of its shields? I'd like to estimate, Captain. This thing didn't exactly come with instructions. I'll draw as much power as I can into the cannon, but we're going to make one heck of a target. Agreed. Douglas, the banished carrier is Atriox's biggest weapon and only means of slipstream transport, so he'll be sending everything he can to destroy that cannon. Hello everybody and welcome to the 8th mission of my Halo Wars 2 Legendary Walkthrough Guide. We're going to be doing Hold the Line and we got a lot to get through and this mission is quite long but it can be very difficult depending on how you start out this mission. So we're going to send our Warthog down to the southwest and we're going to make sure that we start getting these turrets up near the northern area of the map. We're going to also make sure some of our base is ready to go. We also have that one... Uh, that one... Uh, slot mini base going we are going to send Douglas down to the bottom and this is so we can grab all those little mini bases so notice how and we can get this Phoenix log here but this is so we can get everything going in a in a very like quick way everything's going to make sure that we kind of get those those hornets which is what we're going to be using a majority of this mission uh, to basically ensure that we get to a really good point really really fast so Notice how I'm just non-stop doing something. Douglas is, uh, the Warthog is taking out these power silos. The Marines are taking over these generators. The Hornet is going to just sit there make sure he's all chilling. And we're building turrets near where we're expecting, um, basically where we're expecting enemies to come through. So we want to make sure everything is already set up for when those first enemies, again, we're sitting here for a half hour. You're going to be sitting here making sure, like, you don't want to be stuck in a position where you are essentially caught off uh, like caught off guard you want to make sure that you're still like non-stop doing something notice how the marines i sent up to the north um they they're going to take the two slot mini base and we're going to make sure that we have those turrets there as well so 
Once you're done, uh, you can send your marines to go into the garrison. I prefer that you would do that because they kind of can get in the way. And you want to make sure that your combat score is really, really good. So making sure that we have everything um, looking pretty good. We're going to unlock uh, restoration drones as well as the archer missiles for, uh, for our two leader points so far. Uh, going to use the get that, that warthog. I'm going to send our forces up here. It's basically going to send Douglas to go get that next uh, that next tower. And notice how we built a generator over in the southwest. That way, it is safe. It, we don't want to make we want to make sure that the important buildings for us, for example, uh, resource structures, we want to make sure that they are the most protected. They are going to be away from the action. Now, the Marines are going to finish up by taking out those power uh, silos as well as get, uh, getting that uh, that Phoenix log. The Warthog is still going to go around. And make sure that we can get all the, uh, basically all the free resources uh, that we can uh, before we before we deal with the enemies. Now, as you can see here, I focused on those turrets basically around my armory. And then we're going to make sure that we build that air pad as well as a supply pad. So the very first wave of enemies that you're going to be dealing with are really just pure infantry. If you wanted to uh, use some of your power... Um, if you have everything upgraded already, you could theoretically just put it into anti-infantry. However, I would, if you haven't already gotten uh, advanced generators on all your generators, if you haven't upgraded all your supply pads to heavy supply pads, then I would recommend just just hanging out. No point in, in worrying about it. Now, your goal here is going to be basically 2 to 1 uh, Hornet to Nightingale ratio. You're going to be using Hornets and Nightingales. The Nightingales are going to be really instrumental because we need them to heal our Hornets. And we also are going to be supplementing our Nightingales with uh, the Restoration Drones. And just like we did in the previous video, if they're going to toss down that Glassing Beam on you, you're going to want to make sure that you use your, your Restoration Drones as well as your Nightingales to heal all your forces all at the same time. If you can do it that way, you'll be, you'll be in a great position and none of your units will die. You are going to be basically immortal for the rest of this mission. You just need to make sure that you don't lose any. And if you do lose some, that you will automatically are prepared to replenish. So you want to make sure that your macro game is extraordinarily in a, in a very good spot before you even... Before you get to that point. Um, for your turrets, you're going to do several. Uh, especially the ones closer to that, that north side. You want to put those as anti-infantry, and the one to the northeast, closest to our uh, two-base mini-base, you're going to make those anti-vehicle. So the closer that they get to that barricade, you're going to start seeing that vehicles will make it more than any kind of, of other enemy. We're going to get battle-hardened with, uh, with, uh, with that other leader point. Getting our armory, checking out what we can, what else we can get. We're going to help out our marines here to get these... Uh, this, these resources and then we're going to make sure that they get sent all the way down to the bottom uh, nearest to our objective that way they uh, they don't die that and they can also protect it in any case however we're not going to lose any of our barricades so that is also going to be something that we are going to be focusing on this strategy is extremely safe and make sure that you do not lose out on any of your of your barricades like some of our barricades might take damage but we're talking like they're not even going to get to halfway we're going to be so on top of it that th there's going to be no real issue using Douglas here to finish off that. These Marines are ready so we can go put them in the garrison in the bottom left. And uh, as I said, just keep getting uh, pumping out Hornets and Nightingales. Bouncing around to all of our forces, getting those turrets up as fast as we possibly can. These two turrets here on the very far east side of the map, you are going to uh, once put those as anti-vehicle no matter what. Because we need those to handle the marauders that, and locusts that they will send later on, I would say in about five minutes is what I'm expecting. Um, waiting for to upgrade these two turrets here to anti-vehicle. Um, a big reason why we keep this turret here, I like to make it anti-infantry because hunters tend to go, when they come from the northwest, they will... Um, some will split off from their, from their uh, attack party. And they will come and try to destroy your two base mini base, uh, two slot mini base. So you want to make sure that that turret is is basically ready to go. Um, 
see if there's anything. We're going to upgrade those to anti-vehicle. Um, how to protect your base. You're going to build two siege turrets, and you're going to build two um, regular turrets. So the siege is going to be very useful for when uh, enemies start to really hammer your um, your middle barricade and your eastern bar uh, yeah your eastern barricade. So you want to make sure those two are safe. There is only one objective that we don't complete in this mission, and that is the kill x amount of enemies with uh with the drop pot uh, with the drop drop bridge or whatever you need to kill i think 10 um here's a, a reason why we we saw that glassing beam we tossed that restoration drone down and notice how the nightingales are doing the job pretty much expertly so we don't lose any of our we don't lose a single hornet which is excellent he tosses uh atrox tosses down yet another one of his abilities it's basically just that kind of that kind of counter that you want to make sure you do not want to you want to be reactive on this mission because you're kind of holding the line right you do not want to get to a point where you are um basically struggling to to react you want every single time that you do something you're being aggressively defensive and you're always thinking about it as soon as something happens you do not want to be caught caught out doing something so getting some more uh, hornets Checking out on, checking all of our stuff, making sure everything's good. Uh, we need to get this uh, to a command center. That way we can get uh, some more of these, some more of these upgrades. But as you can see here, like uh, the, our resources are very low. Like if you play any strategy game, you want you would typically like to keep your resource count low. Um, nothing, like we're basically keeping everything on top of it. Um, what is bro doing? Okay, yeah, we're sending that warthog. I I didn't want to. The warthog's just gonna make everything kind of like it's gonna mess everything up. So we just want to destroy our warthog. Um, but yeah, this like as you saw here, the west barricade did get hit a tiny bit, but overall, like it, it could it could have been way worse. Um, getting these turrets to anti vehicle. Seeing if there's any other things that we need to do. Get some more hornets. There you go. So there's more enemies. I'll just send the send the warthog over here to go get destroyed by that wraith. Um, but yeah, we need a, the command center that we can get reinforcements level 2. And uh, we can also get the siege turrets. So that's basically all we're waiting for. Uh, there we go. We have siege turrets. Okay. Um... Just making sure that we, we're not worrying about getting air level 1 quite yet. We are basically just focused on getting um, basically to 100 pop as fast as possible. You want to hit that supply block as soon as possible. You don't want to like tech up until you have command center at your, um, at your, at your base. There are going to be times where using the archer missiles is going to be very, very useful. Like right here, as you saw, like there's a bunch of ghosts, just at, or brute choppers. Easy way for you to get a lot of kills with the with the archer missiles. Now, drop uh, the drop turret. I would recommend putting it either at. So you want to make sure that you put it at the fork uh, that where the uh, two roads meet in the northwest, or you want to make sure that it is placed basically right down at the eastern part next to that watchtower and you want to drop it right on the enemies because they will get stunned if you if you do that to them so getting the command center now so getting a little bit more hornets trying to see where we're at yeah so we have 11 hornets five nightingales as i said that two to one ratio uh, that two to one ratio and um you don't want Douglas to be walking around and like in as an infantry unit. You want him to take command over one of the Hornets. That way, it increases the efficiency. So, um, also with your siege turrets, you want to put them at the very front of your base. That way, it gets as much range as possible to hit uh, pretty much as far as far up to nearly your armory, and uh, it's going to be extraordinarily useful for you that way as well. Um. Good point. Uh, good point. Right now, to get air level one, we're gonna send all of our hornets over as soon as we get told. Basically, we're gonna get some attacks from some ghosts. And as you see here, that glassing beam came on down. I said whatever. I have the powerful restoration drones plus my nightingale, so 
I, I, I'm feeling pretty good. We're not worried about anything. And we still have 20 minutes left, so our force is doing pretty well. Um, our barricades getting hammered just a, a little bit, but we're, we're going to make sure that they they stay uh, um, they stay up throughout the mission. There we go. Like, pretty much, you don't want to really be worried about much. I, I would say, like, there's going to be much more to worry about later on when air attacks start to happen, like right around the 10 minutes. But this eastern side, it gets it gets kind of feisty. You kind of want... The reason why you, we go air units um, specifically for this, uh, for this mission is because it is the quickest way for you to react to basically anything on the map. Not to mention Nightingales just... I, I can't sing their praises enough. They are... They make your life so easy for this mission. Kind of just walking, uh, checking out what's going on. Can probably get uh, air level 2 in a few moments. Was well, a little bit aggressive on those Hornets. So, hoping to get some uh, some more. Not not the Hornets, but the Nightingales. But here's, again, where I was talking about where they would uh, send a couple Hunters up to destroy your two-slot uh, two mini base. Nightingales will be useful to just like keep that air pad up and up and running. Doing fine. Just destroy that. We also have some locusts. But it's fine. Like send send your hornets down. They'll they'll knock it out. There's that uh, other siege turret. Gonna get a uh, air level two. Get reinforcements level two, as well as uh, basically get that siege turret up. Should be getting that anti-vehicle upgrade soon, though. And try to take down that turret. Hmm. Trying to see if we can head them off. Get them before they destroy that turret. Looks like we got it. It's fine. Should probably... Yeah, here's where I'm talking about. You drop your drop turret right there. It'll block them. And it will also stun some of them. So good point to use a combo move right there. Use your drop turret plus the uh, the archer missiles. Eastern the eastern side, as I said, it gets crazy. Like you're gonna be dealing with enemies nonstop, pretty much from the east. The north, uh, the west, and the northwest, pretty much nothing goes on. Like, and most of the time it's infantry. And, and because you have all those turrets all lined up, you're pretty much just gonna be chilling. The entire time. Gonna get air level 2. Back off. So whenever you're, you're... Whenever you're waiting in between another attack on something like your base or or you're waiting for the next wave of, uh, of Banish to come on through, the there are two places where you can keep your forces. The first part is at your base or the second part is... The, the second location would be at your two base, uh, the two slot mini base that you have in the north. So the reason why you choose that is you can either, if you keep them at your two slot mini base, if they come from the, the west or the northwest, like you have a way for you to, to handle it. If they come from the east, you're able to choose to the east as well. So it, it's pretty much... There, there, there's a reason why you put them at, at certain spots. But here you go. You got a lot of forces coming in hot right now. A bunch of jump pack brutes. As well as uh, suicide grunts. But again, the suicide grunts aren't, aren't a problem. But these jump pack brutes could be an issue if they make it to your base. Heading over, seeing what's going on over here. But yeah, like... Once we have that, once we have upgraded everything in the armory, like you want to make sure that you have as many air pads as you can, because we really want to make sure that we are on top of replenishing anything that we we lose. And notice, like everything here is like we have a bunch of units here, and they're all they're all still fully uh, fully healed, and they're all working perfectly fine. Waiting for a chance to use the drop pod, uh, drop turret. Sorry. Getting air level 3. So we're almost at that point where the Banshees are going to come in and start to hammer our uh, hammer our base. But 
Uh, at a certain point, you're going to swap over those two turrets on the base over to uh, anti-air turrets. That way, you are able to uh, counter Banshees effectively. But yeah, here's the turret drop. You can drop it right there if you want. You only have to just uh, kill five squads, I think, with or five enemies with the drop turret, which isn't that bad. Like, there's, I think, one right there. Like, we've already gotten three of the five. And I think the drop turret there just got the fourth one. So we just need one more, and it lasts quite a long time. And they kind of just send nonstop enemies at you. So it, it's super easy to get the, the five units with the turret drop. So... But yeah, this is kind of what you're expecting uh, for a large part of this mission. Like, use your use your hornets. Just kind of make sure that the east is is covered. If the east is kind of like quiet, but they're really sending a lot of enemies to you in the uh, from the north or the northwest, then just move your hornets over to cover that side. It, it's it, it really just comes down to that. Air level three. So yeah, we're with 13 minutes left, like, I, I, I don't really know what else to, to really say other than, um, basically, like, this is kind of what you're at. Like, if you get to a point, that's why I said if you have that really good start, you're, you're going to be fine throughout the rest of this mission. Um, and if you have that slow start, that's completely fine. Just make sure that you ramp back up. Uh, basically ramp up your your production like at this point we're just kind of collecting cash like i'm upgrading turrets that i'm probably not going to use at all um well i know for a fact i didn't use them at all so i'm kind of just upgrading stuff to upgrade setting our my hornets over to def defend the mid like th th those those brutes are going to die so it's not even a big deal uh, but sending them over just for fun Seeing that the hunters again are coming from the uh, the northwest, so I gotta send my my hornets over there to to destroy those hunters. Hoping I get a chance. Like I already have my I know I have my restoration drones ready, so I'm waiting for the glass beam to just smite. There it is. Bring down the restoration drones. Try and as I said, the nightingales save your save you so much and that's why we do a two to one um i think we you could have probably done even fewer nightingales and had the same result and you would have had a little bit more firepower but i mean we're doing like we have 19 19 hornets to nine nightingales we're not doing bad but here you go you have uh, 11 minutes remaining this is when they're going to start sending literally everything they possibly can at you um turret drop is ready i don't know where i'm going to basically put it but you're going to have a large swath of infantry you can drop down a drop turret it's going to stun them if if you want to um the enemies from the east that's immediately when you should like send your hornets down getting ready to drop uh archer missiles no biggie The way that they have a, the way that they say these uh, these lanes is kind of weird. Like, so they're saying the the where the ping is at currently that that's east, even though east to me would be closer to the bottom of the map or to the actual like eastern border of the map where where those enemies just are are coming from. And to say that's the northeast, I'm kind of just wondering like why that made sense to them because that's actually more like pure north or northwest i don't know stupid thing to like bring up but it like i don't know i got some uh race to destroy here but it, yeah like seeing it, you can see where what i'm doing here like i'm kind of just bouncing my forces around like if i'm done dealing with the enemies right here i move them over to where there are enemies and i immediately prioritize where if they come from the eastern side okay so nine minutes 33 seconds um still waiting for those air units to pop up i believe they start sending them i thought it was the 10 minute marker but i think it's closer to like the five to seven and a half so somewhere in that two and a half minute 
period where they start sending air units. There we go. It, it, they, they send it right now. I, I, I was about to say, like, I remember vividly the 10 minute marker being pretty crazy. I mean, we already have turrets to, to do all this stuff, guys. We're, we're not in a bad spot. Everybody's pretending like we're, 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 we're panicking, but we're, we're, we're chilling. Like, it's, there's only three banshees. The, the maximum amount of banshees that they will ever send in a wave is five. You don't need to really worry. The two turrets you have, um, th they'll do the job fine. And honestly, for the, like the next minute and a half, all they send at you are just a bunch of banshees. Like, um, we're not in a, like, I'm, as you see here, I'm just kind of like upgrading stuff. Uh, three more banshees come from the, from the west. Seeing it, what's going on over here. Oh, here's that glassing beam. I was not very uh, quick on my reaction, but Nightingales were doing the job, and Restoration Drones just, again, who cares about your glassing beam? I got Restoration Drones and Nightingales. Uh, f here's the five. So they'll usually send the waves 335. 335. Um, and that's how the Banshees usually come. Just waiting to take him out. Right here, he disables most of my uh, most of my hornets, but it's gonna be fine. Like it, the nightingales were the nightingales were healing it. So here's another group of five, and they're also starting to send more infantry. So as I said, like for a minute and a half, they kind of just send pure pure air. Gotta make sure that that turret stays alive, which is also really nice thing about the nightingales is like if your buildings are taking a lot of heat just have a nightingale posted ready to go here's oh that's a large large group so i believe this one has seven yeah seven uh, seven banshees usually they don't send that many but i mean the the intensity of the air units does go up at a time i don't know I think, I just, yeah, we just lost one Hornet, but that's because the Banshees have an upgrade to counter air, so it's whatever to me. I lost one Hornet, but I've destroyed so much of their, so many of their forces. Gonna drop that turret on them. I was thinking about doing Archer Missiles, but thought better of it. That's a waste of, waste of an ability there. Got the Siege Turret. Look at that. Just destroying the uh, the brutes uh, looks like they're gonna be still hammering all right there we go not bad so it will this will be where you would pretty much expect the the banish to start sending literally everything they, they can at you it in the in the final few minutes of this mission they just go completely non-stop like you're going to be dealing with enemies just coming from the north the west uh, and the northwest pretty much non-stop for the final like two minutes like just don't my, my advice to you is not to get overwhelmed or bogged down in like where you should be the only thing that i would prioritize is what really is getting hit hard right now and that is where i would send my forces um i wouldn't send it if i saw three marauders but they're very far away from a barricade but i have people come from this eastern area right now heading towards my east barricade which is going to be much weaker because there's not a lot of turrets along that path then i'm definitely going to be prioritizing my hornets going that way um, i wouldn't prioritize Especially if there's a bunch of enemies coming from just the, the west, northwest area. Like, to me, it just doesn't make sense to, to send your forces that way. There we go. Locust, not really that big of a... Like, usually if you didn't have the Nightingales, I would say uh, Locust might be a little bit of a threat. But, I mean, overall, they're, they're fine. Like, especially, again, because you have Nightingales. Checking up everything. 
uh, toss down that glassing beam. Thankfully, I was able to see my forces as soon as that happened. But, gonna toss down, hopefully I'm able to get these archer missiles off, and I am. So, those ghosts shouldn't do much damage to the barricade over there. So, ultimately, I guess the strategy, if there is one, is really to just be, be ready. The strategy is, make sure that you understand what kind of units that you're dealing with coming from which side. If you're dealing with a, if you're trying to put anti-vehicle near the western area that you've only seen brutes come out of then it, it i would recommend changing that to infantry or if you have air for some reason at the eastern point where there's no air units at then i would recommend maybe focus a little bit more on putting anti-vehicle where, where you've seen pretty much mostly vehicles um as i said the hornets are pretty much the fastest uh, most mobile part they can traverse all types of terrain they can fly over things so that's why I chose them. And Nightingales, of course, perfect. Uh, they're, they're pretty much the best. They are very well-rounded, all-purpose unit. So they're very good at healing your forces and your base. So, like, I would recommend that. And notice how I, th this was one of those classic moments that I was talking about earlier where it's like, okay, my base is getting hit. I know. However, I know that I have turrets still watching over, over my base. But those locusts could really do some damage, so I'm going to send my hornets over to, to handle those locusts. Almost done taking out these marauders. So, no, yeah, like, it's been pretty much non-stop for the past two and a half minutes, so... Kind of just see how this goes. How's this going to finish? I know, not a very, like, uh, even though there was a lot of action pack, the strategy kind of boring. Like, you're kind of sitting here with the same exact strat. Nothing really changes. And, uh, like, I, I, I would say this is a nice little change of pace and very much a, a, a nice thing to see, especially after, like, especially after knowing that you have Under the Dark, which I would qualify the hardest mission in this game by far. And you're sitting there like, why? You went from pretty, pretty nice and, like, a simple kind of like you're able to just handle what what needs to be handled on this one and then you're going against like the ai who just like ramped up the difficulty for some reason on you got some more banshees but i think in the anti-air turrets it's it's nice Final 90 seconds, we got this. Um, I guess like one, if there was something I would say the hardest part about this was, it was definitely the first part of this mission where I had like, I remember that there was quite a few times where I would look at what I, uh, where I would sit here looking at the footage that I, I would get and I was just not pleased with what I saw. Um, and it was mostly because at the very, the very beginning, I did not like how I started. So, a large large thing that I, I wanted to focus on was just making sure I had a clean start. So, um, if, you, if, you're, if the start is the hardest part for you, I would recommend uh, re-watching what I'm doing over and over and over again. Um, use your hotkeys if you're playing on a controller, the down arrow on your D-pad will toss you to your to your forces they'll be all over the map for you um using the left and right arrows on your d-pad as well tosses you from one mini base to your main base or to any of your bases um pretty much anything that you could like utilize the hotkeys and control groups if you want to use those i i wouldn't really say that control groups were really important for this one because you're kind of just using pure air but um at the very end of this mission, as soon as the timer hits zero, you've successfully completed the mission. Like, you are 100% fine. And that's pretty much all I have to say about this mission. In a few moments after this cutscene, we'll look at the uh, scoreboard. We'll see what, what kind of metal... Um, no matter what, this mission will take 31 minutes, 34 seconds. So there's no way to get a better better par time. You'll get perfect par um, for this mission. So... As you see here, the summary, we, the only thing that we didn't get was that undiscovered one, which is the kill tenuous with the uh, with the bridge. 
but everything else is there. Keep the barriers intact, build on all the uh, base plots, and kill five units with the um, with the turret. But that's all I have to say about this video. If you guys like the video, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. And I'll see you guys next time for Under the Dark. Thank you guys for watching.